Hello everyone and welcome to Organic Nomenclature 1. So we'll be dealing with the hydrocarbons, particularly alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatics. I'm Aaron Henato and let's get started. So organic chemistry deals with the non-metallic elements of the periodic table. In particular, we'll be talking about carbon and hydrogen. So let's recall from general chemistry that carbon forms four covalent bonds. So it may also form double bonds and triple bonds as well as exhibit hybridization, particularly sp3, sp2, and sp. So other atoms such as nitrogen also exhibit three bonds and exhibit a lone pair. Oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, while halogens like fluorine, uh, chlorine, iodine, and bromine have one connection, covalent connections, and three lone pairs. So how do we write organic compounds? You may be familiar with the Lewis structure from general chemistry, but that's generally very um, detailed or redundant. Okay, you're also familiar with the molecular formula, which doesn't really give any structural detail. It's really just a collection of the atoms. Condensed structures, they provide little to no structural detail. Since atoms exist in 3D space, you'd expect them to look 3D, not just a collection of letters and lines. And so that's why we use a bond line structure. So how do we use a bond line structure? In a bond line structure, the hydrogens are hidden and carbons are now reduced into vertices or corners or edges. Lone pairs are also hidden. And if you notice, uh, heteroatoms like oxygen and nitrogen, they only show how many hydrogens they have. Okay, So this is how to draw a bond line structure. Let's try converting some bond line structures into their Lewis structures. Let's show the carbon and hydrogen atoms, and then let's write the molecular formula. So in this case, we have an edge here connected to the oxygen. That is, signifies one carbon, which is connected to an oxygen. This oxygen is connected to another corner. That's another carbon. Then it's connected to a nitrogen okay that nitrogen emphasizes that it has two hydrogen atoms so let's draw the hydrogens two hydrogen atoms now how about the hydrogens connected to the carbon well what we can do is use a method of subtraction so if we have four connections for carbons we have one connection existing already for the oxygen now we need three more to complete the octet rule. Carbon connected to three hydrogens. For this carbon, we have two connections. And so we need two more hydrogens. And so that is the Lewis structure. Okay? To complete the octet rule of oxygen, we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's the octet rule. We had two lone pairs. For nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's try writing the molecular formula. So we have two carbons, C2, one nitrogen, N, one oxygen, O. Okay, and how many hydrogens? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. H7. Okay. Next, let's try drawing this one, number 2. So every corner is a carbon. So let's draw each corner. Okay. And we have a nitrogen in the middle, so that's a 5 membered ring and then we have a double bond connecting the hydrogen uh, the carbon and the nitrogen so this carbon has three connections already two from the double bond one from the single bond so let's add a hydrogen this carbon has two connections already so let's add two 
hydrogen connections. This carbon has two connections already, so let's add two hydrogens again. Okay. This nitrogen, let's complete its octet and then let's add two lone pairs. Okay. Now, this carbon is positively charged. So what does that mean? That means it has less electrons than normal. That may be in the form of a pair of electrons taken away from it. So it has two less electrons than in the normal lone pair. So in this case, it only has one connection to a hydrogen. In total, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. So only six electrons. And so it possesses a positive charge. Okay, so let's try drawing, uh, writing its molecular formula. C, we have 4. We have N. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. H, 6. Okay. And we add positive charge. There we go. Next, every edge and corner is a carbon. Okay. So carbon, 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 carbon carbon so five carbons we have double bonds to oxygen in the second and fourth carbon let's draw their lone pairs so we don't forget now for carbon we have one connection here already to this one carbon so let's add three more to signify our hydrogens the other side the same the same manner and then this carbon is negatively charged. Okay. So what does that mean? That means it possesses more electrons than normal. Okay. So what's one way to denote that? Um, one way to denote that is that it can have a lone pair. Okay. But it still doesn't have enough hydrogens. How is this negative now? When uh, it shares a bond with hydrogen, those two electrons are distributed between the two atoms. So when it possesses the lone pair by itself, it gains a net negative charge because it has an extra electron that it doesn't share with anyone. So it's capable of sharing that electron to uh, hydrogen. But since it doesn't, it's... Um, shown as a negative charge okay so we count how many carbons we have five carbons then we have one two two oxygens then we have seven hydrogens and then we have a negative charge Okay, let's try doing the reverse. Let's try converting the following Lewis structures into their bond line structures. Okay, let's go get a simple carbon like this one and this one. There are two carbons connected, so we can just draw a line and then a line connecting to a nitrogen. So this corner and this edge is a carbon. There's one more carbon connected to it, the nitrogen. One more carbon connected to the nitrogen, so that's two groups of single carbons. Then, to complete the octet, let's add two lone pairs. And then, this carbon, this, these two carbons on the left, we can add a double bond because there is a double bond. Okay, so that's all the hydrogens accounted for. That's all the carbons accounted for. And the hydrogens are hidden, so that's the final structure. So actually, we do not need the lone pair, not unless we're doing mechanisms. But sometimes it's good to add them. Now, for this compound, we have a chlorine atom connected to a carbon atom. So we don't write the letter C. We just continue writing another corner. Okay. And then this corner connected to another oxygen and double bonded to another oxygen. And we denote how many hydrogens are connected to this oxygen just by writing it beside it. Okay, so that's the final structure. See how we 
uh, remove the hydrogens. They're not they're hidden now, but they're implied. No? So it's implied it's there. Let's do some easy exercises. Let's convert the following into their bond line structures. Okay, so here's one way to do it. Let's get this set of five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So we'll draw one, two, that's one corner, three, four, five. Okay, so that's a five carbon chain. At the second carbon, we connect another carbon. So let's draw a line going up, and that endpoint is another carbon. Okay, I think that's all of it. So let's see, let's confirm. Okay, so that's the correct structure. Let's look at the next structure. You can see that we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in a ring. And so when we have five carbons in a ring, that's how many bonds? That's also five bonds. So we draw a five sided polygon like this one each corner is a carbon atom on one corner we'll connect this carbon atom so there's another one here okay so that's that's our bond line structures there we go okay, so that's how it looks like now for number three let's look how many carbons we have one two three four five six we have six carbons let's draw a hexagon like that. So you'll be drawing lots of hexagons in organic chemistry, so have to get used to drawing hexagons. Well, it's, it's quite easy to draw hexagons. Heptagons are harder. So these two carbons on the upper left have a double bond, and these two carbons down on the lower left have a double bond. Okay, let's look at the um, structures, correct? Okay, so there's double bonds there. Hey, that's good. So don't forget you can try the moderate and advanced exercises. All the answers are in the uh, PowerPoint. Thanks for watching.